This is Sunday Focus, a weekly public affairs program that looks at the topics affecting our society and the people who are making a change in the community each and every day. The people who have vision for the next generation. Sunday Focus presents new challenges for us, keeping you informed with topics of local and regional interest. Now the host of Sunday Focus, Christine Manica. Welcome back to another edition of Sunday Focus. This is a different episode that we're doing today. We are being joined by Mitchell Olson. He is a South Dakota influencer, media guru, as I like to call him, <laughs> and a local celebrity in his own right. And he's joining us to talk to us about the upcoming Anna Nicole Smith You Don't Know Me documentary only on Netflix. Tuesday, May 16th is when it premieres. Hey, Mitchell, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. Great. You know, this is a little bit different for you. You've been on the show before to talk about late night booming. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about Anna Nicole Smith. Great title of the the documentary, by the way. I thought so, too. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's called Anna Nicole Smith. And then there's like a colon. Then you don't know me. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And I thought that was a great way to describe um, her, considering there are so many things that people, I think, don't know about her. She was um, uh, misunderstood, I would say. So this is a great way to kind of explore who she really was. Yeah. Now, before we get into the meat Mm -hmm. of this production that you were a part of, let's get to know you a little bit for sure. anyone who's not familiar you were part of the second season of survivor and that's kind of how your stardom got started so can you tell us about your time on the show yes so uh season two was um gosh it's, it's been back already 20 some years ago wow you can remember that far <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been a while. Uh, so yeah, so I was, uh, you know, grew up in grew up in Vermilion, South Dakota. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, love the South Dakota area. And then uh, when I graduated from South Dakota State University, I went to New York to pursue theater and television or anything that deals with you know the arts. And and so um, and while I was out there doing that, there was an audition that came up for somebody mentioned this new reality show where they're going to drop like 16 people on an island and, and see uh, every every week they're going to vote somebody else off and the last person standing wins a million dollars. And I thought, what a crazy premise. Mm-hmm. And I was super intrigued. And this was back when you could actually... Uh, punch in like www dot uh, like cbs dot com <laughs> and then go to the website and then learn more about this like yeah. there you know it was back when I don't, I don't even think there was like a, I didn't even know about Google probably <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking up Survivor and I'm learning about this and finding it very intriguing and and I printed off what I needed to fill out <clears throat> and I filled all this paperwork out and I filmed a two minute they only wanted two minutes oh, wow. of uh, tell us about you in two minutes or less. And so I filmed a, um, um, a VHS tape and sent that in and gosh, literally didn't know what would happen and didn't know, didn't think I would get called. And I'm so surprised that I did. And, and, uh, it just went on and on, but, but, you know, they, cause they had 300,000 people audition for that season and they had to whittle that down to 16 people. And that process took months. I mean, it was yeah. really quite grueling. I think that was harder than like the show itself <laughs> oh yeah and, and i told you before i don't watch survivor i yeah. know i just never got into it it's all right so i'm i'm assuming that you were eating bugs mm-hmm. living out in the world wilderness not really having a bathroom i mean when i think of a show like this i think gosh do i even want to be on this show so was this kind of your way of thinking this is my way to get into the business and to kind wow. of start my career that way it, it, in some ways, it could go that way. I mean, um, in fact, somebody that was on my season of Survivor was Elizabeth Hasselback, which yeah. a lot of people know her from being on The View. She was um, on Fox and Friends for many years. Um, so she, uh, this this kind of took off and spiraled into a really big career for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it has for other people. So, um, but I don't think that was really my goal. My, my whole thing was musical theater. And I knew that this didn't showcase anything to do with 
with what I did. <laughs> I know it didn't. <laughs> so I, I kind of, um, for me at least, my entire life and premise has kind of been just to do everything and anything that seems hilariously fun. I mean, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm all about like having as much fun as I possibly can on this in this life. So I kind of looked at it more like that as yeah. an experience, as something totally different and unique. And um, let's just see how far this can go kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I certainly, after it aired, um, wanted to see what opportunities could come up and what I could do with those opportunities. I mean, I even recorded a session in, in Nashville where I recorded um, a few songs. And one of them was um, with like Reba McIntyre's backup singer. And I was in their studio. And and so I, I, I had some really cool opportunities to do yeah. some things that I do like to do. Like music was my, you know, my background and what I had a degree in. So it was kind of cool to be able to have some of those opportunities after Survivor. So I did try to, you know, spin that into some kind of a spinoff of something, you know, for mm-hmm. a while. And, and, um, and then eventually came back to South Dakota and uh, where I've, I've pursued lots of great things here, too. I just like re fell in love with South Dakota and, mm-hmm. and everything that South Dakota has to offer. Um, and so, I, I mean, I couldn't imagine living outside of the state at this point. I just really yeah. like it here. Yeah. Now you appeared on multiple TV shows yes. after Survivors. So what were those opportunities? <laughs> Hollywood Squares? Yeah. One of them? Yeah. Hollywood Squares um, was great. Uh, that That's <laughs> one where you could. That, like I actually got to be a square, you know. I got yeah. to sit in there. Like uh, I think, yeah, Whoopi Goldberg was the middle square, <laughs> and and they filmed like five episodes in one Sunday afternoon. So in between the episodes, we would go have lunch and stuff with the other people on the show. Oh, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, we had it was fun. Um, also, when I was in high school, I was on The Price Is Right. Or sorry, when I was in college, I was on The Price Is Right. And then when I moved to New York City, um, I was cast on. Um, on the Wheel of Fortune. So little did I know that there was a game show rule where you can only be on two game shows in a 10-year period. You can't be on more than two in a 10-year period. It's a federal law. So I didn't know this, and... um, and didn't get a phone call about Survivor beyond Survivor for uh, for a long time, and I kept thinking, "What's going on here?" And finally, they uh, they they never called. They they had released me from um, the show, so I was like, oh, "I thought for sure the audition went well." And then season two came along, and I thought, "Well, there's no way that I'm going to get on season two if they didn't if they you know didn't call me for yeah. season one." So I didn't even audition for season two, and um, that's the one I ended up being on. But um, a funny story i was doing um a i was doing a musical in utah at the time and um one of the producers of survivor was at a wedding and sitting at the table where where i was um working for a woman in new york city um for a a temp agency and this producer from survivor was sitting with her at a table and telling her how she cast for survivor and this woman was saying oh a guy i worked with auditioned for that and he got really far and his name is mitchell really tall guy and she was like we are looking for him do you know how to get in touch with him and so she gave them my number and they contacted me while i was doing this musical out in utah and i two people have my number my parents and my roommates so i'm like there's no way that (laughs) and the producers called and said we've been looking for you um we want you to be on season two we couldn't put you on season one because there's a game show rule where we can't have more than two you can't be on more than two game shows in a 10-year period and survivor was considered a game show at that time Mm. because we give away a million dollars but now um uh survivor is being categorized as a reality show Mm. and so that no longer applies to you and so we can put you on season two (laughs) and so i'm like okay let's do this yeah if you are just listening mitchell olson he is joining us in the studio right now he's a south dakota media guru and he has a connection to anna nicole smith which is why we're bringing him on to talk about that upcoming netflix documentary before we get into that you were part of one of my favorite shows deal or no deal as the casting director and you've had so many other memorable moments and experiences and it's important to know and you said it too your 
you're still a South Dakota kid. You came yeah. back to your home roots. Yes. Yeah. I love it here. Yeah. <laughs> you you can't it. imagine living anywhere else. Right. 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 Um, but yeah, Deal or No Deal is such a great show. I love that you love it. Oh my gosh. I'm so, I'm telling you, Mitchell, if you were still, if you were still part of the show, I would say, can you get me on it or my mom? We, we love Deal or No Deal. That is great. I mean, it's such a simple premise. It is. <laughs> And I would always be like, no, you got to keep going at least until you get to round five. That's an interesting show. I enjoyed casting it, although it was probably one of the most difficult shows to cast because um, so many people came to that audition. Oh, it was yeah. new at the time. People loved the show. It's easy money. You have to admit, that's the kind of show <laughs> where you're going to get everybody to audition because... There, there isn't any skill required. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you don't have to be good at something. You don't have to be um, strong or even mentally strong, you know? Um, Just got to so, have enough willpower, I guess. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, that, so, yeah, so that makes it difficult as a casting director to try to decide who to pick. And so uh, we based a lot of it on, you know, that interview and, and their energy and just how they seem to react um, to our questions. And, mm -hmm. and, and so that's how we picked the people. But we also played um, once we when once we picked them and, and got them narrowed down a little bit. We would play some games with them and kind of see how they would react to winning and losing different amounts sure. of money. So, yeah. so we would do that. Um, but that's a that was a great show um, to cast for, and I just I loved my time with Deal or No Deal. Yeah, in between meeting all these people, making connections, really hustling mm -hmm. in the industry, you somehow made a strong impression and formed a unique friendship with someone who I like to call the modern-day Marilyn Monroe, Anna Nicole Smith. Yes. So let's start with how you met Anna Nicole. Sure. Um, so she and I... Uh, well, I, after Survivor, I should say, about a year after Survivor was on, I got an email from E! Television asking if I would um, participate in their season two um, premiere of the Anna Nicole show. It was their highest rated show, and they wanted to do something different with season two, where it was kind of like a bachelorette sort of thing, where Anna was the bachelorette, and she was going to go on a couple of dates, and I was going to be one of the dates. And so I thought, well, that's a crazy uh, pairing, but, but it sounds, it fits into my, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, my criteria of, is it fun and ridiculous? And so yeah. I thought, yeah, let's do this. And so I was flown out to LA for a week and, um, I just remember showing up at Anna Nicole Smith's house and it was just overrun with producers running mm. around and cameras everywhere. And, and I felt so out of place and just wow. like nervous, not knowing, um, you know, what to do or say or how to fit in. And, and right off the bat, a producer pulls me aside and says, oh, yeah, so for your date, we're going to have you um, um, up on the balcony with Anna. She'll be in her bedroom and you're going to be serenading her um from the balcony with the, this guitar oh my gosh. and you're going to sing a song to her. Um, and I was looking at this producer like thinking to myself, I don't even really play the guitar. I mean, I know how to play guitar, but like not really. Right. I mean, I know how to strum a couple chords yeah. and, and, and I was thinking, what song am I going to sing? And he was just like, well, you, you know, you're a singer songwriter. Cause that's what the title was under my survivor name oh, was singer gosh. songwriter. And he's like, so, you know, you can make something up, which <laughs> I ended up having to make something up. But, um, I thought I should make something up. That's public domain, you know, because the producers will say we want to be able to play the song. So, I sang, um, I did a parody to Oh Susanna to <laughs> <laughs> and made it Oh My Anna. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So I, um, I sang that with the guitar mm -hmm. and it was silly, of course, but funny. And I guess she liked it. But, um, but anyway, then we, uh, then we kind of hung out at the house and, and, uh, got to know each other and, and that evening and, 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 and so that that's when we be, kind of became friends was that night at the house, um, hanging out with her. Uh, and then, uh, then yeah, after that we would, 
uh, message each other or remember I am, you know, how yeah. you would oh, yeah. <laughs> instant message on, on the computer. We would instant message all the time, back and forth, late at night. I would look on my computer and she was almost always online. You know how it would show their their, their little thing is the blue. emoji, yeah. yeah. And so I would message her and ask if she was up and she would write back and we would just, you know, talk about all kinds of things. She, mm-hmm. of course, as you know, was going through weight issues at the time. She was just getting signed up with something called Trim Spa. And that was a, th- um, a diet, you know, pill that did was really successful for her. Um, anyway, so weight loss was or was or was a big issue at the time. She was also going through, uh, you know, the fact that she wanted this child and um, not necessarily wanting another partner attached to this child. She kind of wanted a child free and clear of all the strings that come with sure, a child. Yeah. <laughs> and and so that was kind of the plan at the time was. We, we, we talked about that sort of thing as well. Um, and, and so anyway, uh, but that, yeah, so the, the friendship really grew from, from that initial meeting in Los Angeles and, and, um, she would come to New York and I would hang out with her and occasionally I would go to LA and, and stay there for a couple of days or even a week. And, um, we met in Nebraska for a, for a benefit for a kid's benefit. Um, so there's, yeah, we, we just, we hung out a lot during those last seven years of her life. How would you describe your friendship with Anna Nicole? You know, what kind of drew you to one another? Um, I think it's pretty pretty obvious just the the sensibilities about like she she's just, you know, just that kooky kinds of kind of whimsical mm-hmm. um fly by the seat of her pants uh kind of spirit and i i can see a lot of that in myself so uh, i think that was one thing for sure i mean you know deep down she's this really sweet texan um girl at heart and and um i think you know really a people pleaser at heart as well and just um we just had a lot of st- similarities between us and and i think that that was part of it too yeah what is your favorite memory with anna nicole maybe did she ever want to come visit south dakota we did talk about that and yeah. and and i remember um oh, one particular time she was going to come out um around halloween and we thought that it'd be fun to go door to door together um doing trick-or-treat like doing like in costume and she had mentioned that i would be i would make a great matchstick head where like i i could <laughs> i could die my head red and I'd be a matchstick because I'm so tall oh and my slender. Gosh. <laughs> and so I always thought that was a clever... <laughs> <laughs> would she be the the lighter then? maybe is that what she was <laughs> yeah thinking? she'd be the fire <laughs> oh there you go there you go if you are listening mitchell olson he is joining us right now he is talking to us about his relationship with anna nicole smith because there is a new documentary on netflix premiering on tuesday may 16th anna nicole smith you don't know me and mitchell he is part of that now this could be hard to talk about anna nicole's death mm-hmm. now obviously there's a lot of layers that are involved with this subject. How did you react to the news? Well, I was in um, Hawaii at the time, and um, I remember so clearly that my phone, I was, I was, I happened to be working in Hawaii at the time uh, for a week, but this particular day I had a break and I was at the beach with a friend and my phone was just going nuts. It was blowing up. You know, I looked at it and every, every couple of seconds, somebody else was calling. And, and these are people that I hadn't heard from in for ages, mm-hmm. like people from Survivor and just like people I hadn't talked to in ages. And I thought, what's going on? Like what blew up? Because this is something's crazy. So I didn't even answer any of the calls. I, um, and I remember my phone was like overheating. You know how sometimes when it gets in the hot sun, oh, yeah. so I couldn't even answer it. I just saw it was ringing constantly. And so so went back to the condo, plugged the phone in, and while I'm plugging it in, my friend turns the TV on, and every single station that we turn to is just an aerial like helicopter view of the hospital in Florida where she where she was pronounced dead. And a, scrolling across the bottom of the screen um, was it just kept saying over and over, Anna Nicole Smith dead at 36. I, I just I couldn't. I don't know. I just like. I, 
I mean, like my heart stopped. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. And in a weird way, I guess in a weird way, you know how sometimes you almost um, were maybe expecting this news in a weird sure. way. I, I I knew that she wasn't, she was having a tough time. You know, she, uh, as many people, those who followed her, at least at the time, knew she had just given birth to her only daughter and she was yeah. so of course happy to have a daughter that's all she really wanted was a daughter yeah. and um and you know she had a 21 year old son at the time daniel and he was her life mm-hmm. now he flew to the bahamas to be with her when she was going to give birth to this daughter and um and during that flight he had so he had his neck hurt and he and a According to according to somebody in the hospital room, he was given some kind of medication mm. and passed away like right there in the hospital while she was about to give birth to a daughter. So yeah. what a crazy thing to happen. I mean, if right. you if you I mean, honestly, uh, uh, if a writer put that into a movie, most producers would say that's crazy that right. all that would happen to somebody. It's not even believable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. It, you know, so her, her, her son dies, um, her daughter is born and here you, you know, you want to celebrate this life that you had this new life, but all she can think about is the fact that her son died yeah. and, um, she spiraled out of control. And I remember, um, trying to have conversations after that point and it was just a different Anna. So I knew that she, you know, was using again and I really was worried about her well-being and so it was one of those things where I did I did worry and I did think that that could happen and and so seeing it um actually before your very eyes was just um just so sad um but yeah just a total shock uh when I saw that How much did she tell you what was going on in her head or just like when she did start to use again? Because sometimes Mm -hmm. when someone is an addict, Mm -hmm. they don't like to divulge so much. You're right. So how much did she let you in on her life that way? Yeah, you're right. After she gave birth, she definitely didn't want to lead on that she was using again. I remember that there were even there was even a video that came out of her where she had painted her face and she appeared that she definitely was using. And so I remember that was pretty, made it pretty clear that we thought, yeah, she is certainly having troubles again. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you're right. It wasn't easy to get that out of her because, because at the same time I felt bad. She had gone through such a tough situation and, um, and don't forget at that time pills in a weird way were looked at, especially from her, um, were looked at like, you know, these are doctor prescribed. These are sure. things that, that should be safe to take. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, um, and she kind of looked at pills that way, unfortunately. And um, depending on the combination and how many you take, they, of right. course, can be dangerous. Mm-hmm. We, we now know, of course. So when this upcoming documentary, mm-hmm. Anna Nicole Smith, You Don't Know Me, I like to think of it as like a tribute to Anna yeah. in a way. Yeah. So would you say this story is a way to keep her memory alive and how did you get involved with this project? Absolutely. I think it's a way to keep the memory alive. In fact, I talked to the producers. They had mentioned that, that, you know, this particular uh, documentary is going to showcase some never before seen footage of, of her that they found from the nineties and um, some home videos and other, and other footage that, has never been seen before. They also mentioned that this documentary will really be told um, from her point of view, too. They have a lot of that that footage to use from her point of view. They also are talking to people they've never talked to along the way. Um, a lot of new people to provide parts of the story that haven't been provided before. And so I always watch these documentaries thinking eventually they're going to get to the full truth of of Anna's life, um, life and death. And I think that this documentary is going to be that time where we finally see, um, them reach that, that truth, that full story, I think. I know you can't say too much right now, but what was filming like? Did the producers even say, let's go to South Dakota to, to get your side? That actually was uh, talked about. We did consider it um, mm-hmm. for a while. And in the end, we uh, met in Palm Springs, which was a very special place for Anna. That, um, that's somewhere where she w- would vacation. That's where she met her assistant, Kimmy. And so 
Palm Springs was a was a was a definitely a, a a spot of interest for her, and and so it was nice to film there. Although very hot, I've never. I mean, we would walk out of the hotel, and it would take your breath away how hot it was. I think, Literally, I think it was like 116 degrees. And and the other thing is like the news reporters they report on it like it's so common, you know, like oh yeah. another day of 116, like it's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's hot there. But yeah, so we filmed it there in in Palm Springs, and um and that was quite a quite a production they rented out this entire house just for this filming of it and mm. there's a big beautiful pool behind me and and um and the, the pre-interviews started long before you know where uh the producer would call me from from london and, and we would talk on the phone for hours and she would start back at the very beginning like about my life and, sure. and so they really learned about each person in this film. I mean, I, I couldn't believe how much work they put into the backstory and, and to the, in, into the people who are part of this film. I even asked how, how long they had worked on this. And they said that they put three years into this film and, and that's way longer than they normally put into mm -hmm. a project uh, like this. But this is wow. a full feature documentary um, for Netflix. And so they really wanted to give it their all. Again, this is Mitchell Olson, South Dakota media guru, talking about the upcoming Anna Nicole Smith You Don't Know Me documentary on Netflix, May 16th. And just a couple more questions yeah. for you. Did you just feel like the memories were, were rushing back as they were asking you questions about Anna Nicole? Yeah, it was it was um, interesting because they, they were specifically wanting um, memories of things that, that we did together and just memories that I had about her or things that she had said. So it was um, certainly an emotional time yeah. um, for me during that interview process. And I and I caught myself like crying uh, during the documentary and then thinking to myself, oh my God, they're so going to use that because they always use crying. And right, so right. I'm worried now that like 700 million people are going to see me ugly cry um, on, on TV. Uh, and that's way too many people to see that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think people are going to feel after watching this documentary? Or wh what do you think their opinion of Anna Nicole Smith is going to be? For one, I think people are going to learn that there is a South Dakota connection to That's Anna true. Nicole. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how people react to that. But also, um, I'm excited to see <clears throat> how many really, truly remember Anna. Um, I know that I, I do speak at sometimes at schools and things like that. And, and when I bring up Survivor or the Wheel of Fortune or Price is Right, all these kids, third graders, fourth graders, they all get it because they see these shows on TV and they like those yeah. shows too. But when I mention Anna Nicole Smith or if that ever comes up, they're just blank because it's, it's not something that registers with them. So, mm -hmm. so I did start to wonder if this was a topic that people had forgotten about. But mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of excited to see that after I posted it, I'm, I'm having even strangers come up to me and say, oh, we're so excited. We have our TVs um, set on our calendar. We're so excited to watch. So um, it's making me see that um, adults definitely remember Anna Nicole. Um, I, I do know that during that time, and a lot of people forget this, but when she died, America didn't know who the real father was at that time. Mm -hmm. So they had to go through a 30-day trial oh, and geez. keep her body like cold for 30 days before they could bury her um, while they decided who the real father was. And and it was such a grueling process. And I remember hearing a statistic that said that that trial had more media coverage than 9-11. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's insane. So, um, uh, so it really goes to show how people can and get so enthralled in a case of this nature, um, especially when it's salacious like this and and has so much um, um, tied to it uh, with with the death and with everything else and the and and, and mystery and, and when there's money involved a and lot yeah, let's of not money forget involved. millions and millions and millions of dollars. Mitchell Olson once again, he is the South Dakota influencer, media guru, and he was here to tell us all about Anna Nicole Smith. You don't know me documentary on Netflix Tuesday, May 16th. You're also part of Late Night Boom and Mitchell, so mm -hmm. for anyone that's wondering, just to wrap this up, when is season two? Yes, yeah, season two of Late Night Boom and we, um, we don't have a date yet picked for that, but it's going to be, we're hoping this summer is the plan. So right 
now we're just kind of getting our ducks in a row. We're talking with some potential sponsors. Um, we're talking at potential guests. We're talking through, yeah, we're talking through all sorts of fun things. And so we're hoping that season two of Late Night Boomin will be probably this summer. Um, but definitely will keep you posted. There's still lots of good stuff to come from that. All right, awesome. Once again, Anna Nicole Smith, You Don't Know Me, premieres on Netflix Tuesday, May 16th. And Mitchell, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Sunday Focus is a public affairs program of Results Radio, Town Square Media, Sioux Falls.